Hey, what is going on, everybody? I'm Director Nat, back for another reaction, and today we're going to be watching Amphibia Season 1, Episode 7. This episode is called Dating Season and Anne vs. Wild. I saw that the thumbnail has Hop Hop and some other character up on stage uh, doing some kind of performance, so maybe this is a love interest for Hop Pop and kind of going into uh, his acting days. And obviously, Anne vs. Wild is a play on Man vs. Wild, so maybe Anne is going to be alone and having to survive, which that would be an interesting change of pace if it's primarily her and maybe a couple of other supporting characters. I guess there's only one way to find out, so let's not waste any more time. Let's just get right into it. I know I say this every time, but it's true. I just love this intro so much. Like, I could watch this on repeat so many times. This place is full of nature. Woohoo! Yeah. Hmm? Oh no, it's an ambush! <laughs> I'm hit! It's break down! Break down! Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, Ivy! Nice ambush! Gordon awake? Classic! <laughs> Can't take all the credit. You're really easy to trick. Since the title is Dating Season for a second, I thought this was gonna be that uh, creepy little girl that uh, Sprig got engaged to a couple episodes ago, but. <laughs> well, well, well. She's kind of cute, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, 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 well. <laughs> uh, I can't deal with these facial expressions. Oh, nothing. Except, Brick was totally flirting with a cute girl. <laughs> no kidding. And <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> My God, stop it, Ed. Stop. Abby Sandu, nobody move. I'm getting the cart chip kit. This is so exciting! Go but Sprig is already being engaged because of pizza dough. So that still has to come back into play, doesn't it? Only frogs who have performed the ceremonial dance in the ceremonial garb are allowed to be wed. Huh, kitschy. I like it. Okay, one, Sprig is 10 years old. Two, you cannot force relationships. Or can we? She gave me this nifty ring. Forget her. Oh. Was he just referencing that other girl? Uh, whatever. If our families merge, we'll be rich! Wow. And you trust these things? Definitely. Magazines never lie. Could Ivy be my eternal love? Well, we're about to find out, because I already asked your family. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. They agreed to a date! What do you want? Oh, your tip! All right, here you go. Don't take too much, though. I have chores to do later. <sighs> Stop struggling. Okay, just a little. So it wasn't Hot Pop in that garb. You it's look Sprit. incredible. I just assumed it was Hot Pop since he's a failed actor. Huh. Rude much? All right, boy, go get that lucrative business relationship. I mean, romantic relationship. <laughs> Saved it. Hmm. Hey. Hi. Hey. Hi. You're looking like a uh, girl frog. Oh, okay. Uh. Your, uh, collar. <laughs> well, this is pretty awkward. This is so exciting. I wonder what their ship name will be. I think Sprig Ivy. What are you even saying? <laughs> Okay, they have got to do a crossover with Owl House at some point. These two have to meet. Excuse me, everybody, but I hear we have a couple of love doves here tonight. Uh... Papadaya Planter says, Sprig, don't mess this up for us. And Felicia Sundu would like Ivy to have a great courtship. Wink. It says wink here. Love, Mom. All right, then. Hit it, boys. That guy sounds familiar. Uh... Is he the voice actor who played that uh, one alien in uh, Lilo and Stitch? I had no idea you felt this way about me, Sprig. Oh, sure. Didn't you know two thirds of all mates start with souls? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh la la. The little love doves are sneaking off into the woods. You know what that means. It means. Again, they are 10. If those two don't finish that dance, then this courtship will be ruined, along with my financial security. Wait, what? We cannot let them waste this chance. Can they really not do it at a later point? And wait a minute, if Sprig was engaged to that other girl, then don't they also have to do the dance, but then that is a bug. I'm overthinking it. 
Mm. Whoa. Love doves. Don't move or we're dead. What? I thought they were all romantic and mate for life. Yeah, and they spend that life massacring all living things. Beautiful. <laughs> Guys, it says here that our relationships define us and nothing else. Nothing else! You two were greedy. Plain and simple. Maybe a little. It's nuanced. Nice. Totally innocent for once. You two should be ashamed. Mm. Wow. I feel lighter somehow. More free. <laughs> On the count of three. One... Two, Sprig, <laughs> You are learning well. Sprig, next time we won't get the courtship kit out until you're good and ready. Now I can focus on finding love for Polly. No! Now you and I can go back to being just friends. Yep. Oh, you just fell in love with her, didn't you? Yeah, I just fell in love with her. <sighs> Let's go with Spryby. Lotion. Oh, hey, what's this? Oh my gosh. Guys! I brought a bathrobe from home and didn't even know it. Oh, oh, what? Yeah. The three of us are going to Camp Flemington. Wait, without me? Sure are. When we planners camp, we camp hard. You're soft, Dad, like a baby. Really? You should be glad you're not one of us. Just because I'm not a planter doesn't mean I can't have a good time with you guys. Take me with you. Please, please, please. Well, all right, kid. Hop on. Woo, woo. Since you're coming with us, we gotta lather you up with this gunk. Only way to keep the ticks away. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Back around. Oh, looks like I missed a spot. Totally not regretting this. So much fresh air and it's all mine. <laughs> She <laughs> love the peace and quiet. A frog can really hear themselves think out. <laughs> Did you leave the stove on? The front door unlocked? Will you die alone? <laughs> well, that was a mistake. Oh. <gasps> Are you sure you want to Is Hop Pop the most relatable character to me now? Huh, maybe I should try some of that thinking. Are you forgetting something? Does the car need gas? Will your dreams go unfulfilled? Well, that was a mistake. Seriously, Ann, no need to torture yourself. Take Bessie and go home. And don't you worry about us, because we'll be just fine without you. Without you. Without you. Without you. No! What? It's just, uh... <laughs> I'm not used to such easy camping. Easy? Look around you. I guess I'm just used to something a little more extreme. Ah! This place ain't extreme enough for you! Dang right it ain't. <laughs> I can't evil laugh, I'm sorry. Lead the way, Mr. Uh Name's Joe. Soggy Joe. <laughs> yeah. Could you like turn down the creep? Just a bit. No! <laughs> <laughs> God, this show is dark. Oh, you have no idea. It's the Mud Man. Something tells me this has got to be a prank or setup. I wonder if maybe Hop Pop and the others are behind it. Sunlight right about now. Or heck, cleaning products. <gasps> I have something even better. Peony Princess Bath Bomb! Goodbye, dear friend. Ah! Ah! Well, guess we're dead. Uh -huh. 
อาหาโอ้ Is that the artwork that's always on Disney Plus? Wow. I'm not a planter. Heck, I wasn't even invited on this trip. I really like you guys and wanted to be with you, miserable or not. I don't know if it's the sweet smell of chocolates. Next time we'll include you, Anne. Even if we know you'll hate it. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Good thing I wore my axe-proof vest, eh? So, what did I miss? Guys, now that we've been through a lot, there's something I'd like to share with you. This oh. is how I got here. Hmm. 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 Nope. Never seen anything like it. Well, it was worth a shot. It's just as I feared. Oh my god. Alright guys, so that was Amphibious Season 1, Episode 7. That was actually really smart how they did the twist at the end, because once they uh, left from the camping trip, I thought that was pretty much going to be the end of the episode. Uh, but they finally got to, you know, the long-term uh, story stuff, you know, related to uh, Anne getting home and uh, the mystery of how she came here. I didn't expect them to include that at the end, but I guess it does make sense because now that Anne and them uh, finally became closer and she admitted how she's been feeling about not really being a part of their family. Uh, it makes sense that, you know, she would feel that it's, uh, time to share new information with them. And they also caught me off guard with Hot Pop. Like, I thought that was just gonna be a little tease. I thought they were kind of, uh, doing a joke about him not doing anything, but no, he, uh, knows what's going on. He knows what that thing is. I think it said it's a calamity box, so I assume it's some kind of, uh, magical artifact that can be used for destruction, which I guess explains why this mysterious mysterious character with the scar over his eye has uh, kidnapped Sasha and is looking for her friends because he thinks one of them has the box and if he gets it then he could use it for some kind of evil plan. It also reminds me of something from another show which real quick I'm going to talk spoilers for Gravity Falls so if you've never seen that show and you don't want to get spoilers I highly recommend that you go watch it uh, otherwise skip to this point in the video. Because in Gravity Falls there was also an overarching mystery regarding the journals and who the author there was and stuff like that. And then eventually in the show they reveal that Stan was uh, keeping secrets from Dipper and Mabel that he had one of the secret journals and uh, it tied into the overall plot of the show. And this is what that reminded me of. Hot Pop is kind of like the Grunkle Stan uh, keeping something in a journal secret about uh, some kind of powerful thing that has the potential to destroy the universe I guess. Makes me wonder what else this show might have in common with Gravity Falls. But okay no more spoilers for Gravity Falls we can now move on. As for the rest of the episodes, I really enjoyed them as always. I thought it was cool seeing one of Sprigg's other friends, which again, if I'm getting nitpicky, I thought that he didn't really have a lot of friends before Anne came along, but I guess he could just be generalizing. And I did really like this Ivy character. I like how she has a bit of a wild side. I kind of like her dynamic with Sprigg. And quick question, is there actually a shipping name for these two characters? Like Anne was coming up with a bunch of names, like what's their shipping name going to be? Which was uh, such a meta joke, uh, but I am curious, uh, let me know if there actually is a name for that. And on the topic of shipping, God, they have got to do a crossover with Owl House at some point. I don't know when, I don't know how, but it has got to happen. I mean, that would be such a perfect crossover. Anne and Luz are both characters who have been uh, sent to a new crazy world. And there are so many funny moments that could come out of that. Like maybe they could both be geeking out about shipping and Polly and King will uh, team up to make fun of them about it. Like, gosh, uh, that's got to happen at some point. Point. I even have a theory about how it could happen. Luz and Ida could be uh, trying to open a magical portal and somehow they uh, get sent to Anne's world and then they uh, have a bunch of crazy shenanigans before they both go their separate ways. Is it unlikely? Sure, but I think it would be so cool if they found a way to pull it off. 
So actually getting back to Amphibia, I really enjoyed uh, the second half of the episode as well, because it builds off what Anne has likely been feeling for a while, that one, she's not a frog, uh, this isn't her world, she's not really a planter, and uh, they've, you know, kind of had a lot of episodes dealing with those things. So when they're going on a special camping trip and they automatically assume that she shouldn't go or wouldn't want to go, uh, it would make sense that she would want to prove herself, so I thought it was uh, really cool that they focus on that. And obviously there are lot of fun and hilarious moments with them uh, camping, especially when this uh, hardcore camper guy shows up and they get into all these dangerous situations. Actually, before I forget going back to the first half of the episodes, like all those uh, facial expressions that uh, Anne was making when uh, she was found out that Sprig uh, might be in love with this girl, like... <sighs> Okay, back to the second half of the episode, and yeah, like I said, I like how they ended the episode. Uh, I didn't expect them to start throwing in uh, long-term story details, but uh, it made sense after what happened, and I am so curious now to see what's going to happen. I hope they'll follow up with this uh, in the next episode, like maybe Anne will try to find out more information, maybe Sprig will be like, oh, hey, there's this uh, librarian that we can ask, uh, he or she might know something about it. Or maybe they'll run across Anne's other friend, or they'll uh, bring this villain into the mix. They're probably not going to get to that for a few more episodes at least. Uh, they're probably just kind of teasing us for right now and then most of season one is still going to be these uh, fun standalone episodes. But I'm still engaged either way. I am thoroughly enjoying the show and now I'm even more excited for the next few episodes. So with that I'm going to turn it over to you guys. What did you think of this episode? What other episodes are you looking forward to me reacting to in the near future? Whatever it is feel free to share your thoughts down in the comments and let me know what you think. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more content. Also, be sure to check out my other videos. It really does mean a lot. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next Amphibia reaction.